They want to rule for God, but have no compassion for the people. God wants to speak truth to our hearts. We got to tell them, I want truth in my inward parts. I want wisdom in my inward parts. I'm on, I don't want to cheat you. I want you to do what you want to do on the inside of me. I want you to work in me to will and to do of your good pleasure. I don't want it just a scripture. I want it to become my life. I want to move off the pages and move, and move it into my purpose. You know what I'm saying? I want to move it from my ears to my heart and let it sink down in my heart. As I give myself to it, it shows up in my feet. In my lifestyle. He wants to speak truth. We can't hear it. We refuse to hear it. Church is wrapped up in our rituals. We, we just because we we're, we're on. A, I consider us to be a cutting edge church. That's given. Okay, how many edges we gonna cut? I don't know, but <laughs> but we can still even knowing that don't mean we're gonna move towards what God is calling us to. Where we've been is not enough. Who we are is not enough. Where we're going is the purpose. So we can't waste it on what we're doing now. We, we got to be transitory. We got to be migratory. We got to be moving, you know, from one realm to the next realm, from one understanding to the next understanding, from one, you get what I'm saying, one, one truth to the next truth. One thought, a concept that he passed down to us, we got to maximize everything he's committed to our stewardship. You hear me saying that word a lot because I just drew. Hmm. We wrapped up in rituals and ceremonies, not this church, talking about other churches, programs, doctrines. If we turned it to, to the dinner thieves and we began to prostitute the information that God has placed on the inside of us. Conjured up doctrines and substitutes, all for selfish gain. But there's no shortcuts in the kingdom. That's so why you got to drive out those ideologies and those concepts and those high things that want to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it unto the obedience of Christ to the nature that he's engrafted you in and he's placed you into. Amen? So we can be fruitful and that our fruit can remain. It's a blueprint that God has given us through the kingdom of God. But the problem is within us. There is a lot of nonsense going on on the inside of us. <laughs> Soulless, sensual stuff. That's, it wants to interrupt and even withstand what God wants to build in our hearts and in our minds. He wants to free us from ourselves. That we may offer ourselves unto him without spot or blemish. He wants to free us from ourselves. So that we don't have to be orphans. So we can offer ourselves up to him without spot and blemish. So we can be engrafted into the family of God, both in heaven and on earth. So we can comprehend it. Not just in theory. Anybody here tonight believe that? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm about to be done. <laughs> we got to get it, folks. We got get to get ourselves to that place. We gotta understand that's what reformation is all about. It's reforming us, it's reshaping us, it's renewing us. See, God can't give to us on the scope and the level that He's already preset. Even the prophetic words have been unctioned over the house. We've had people come and speak comfortably to the house, give us directions. But it can't happen until we allow that word to have its perfect place in us. That's what Reformation does. It brings us to a place where the word is, our receptivity towards the word is easy. But most of us get something and we put it on pause or it's suspended yeah. until we're ready for it and we just want to reach up and grab it. Yeah. But see, that's not that's the knowledge that made the heavens shut up in the garden. Mm -hmm. They wanted to reach up and get something that belonged to them in the beginning. Stop reaching for it. Submit to God. Submit to his word. You get what I'm saying? That's how you make yourself pliable and flexible for the things of God. 
So when the next season comes, it won't be a conflict. Then you try to shuffle and make the adjustment at the moment. Yeah. Then the grace for change is not there. Look, he told him in Leviticus 26, he said, I'll bring the new store mm -hmm. when your old store is done. Y'all yeah. read it? You anybody ever read it over in the, let me, Leviticus? Let me show you. <laughs> I need something new, guy. <laughs> Good luck with that, buddy. You have never heard of the fullness of time? Huh? That means whatever I gave you in the beginning is ready, right? That's what the fullness of time means. I need a bigger house, I need a bigger car, I need a bigger dog, I need a bigger this, I need a bigger that. And everybody just got our mind running and racing. And we're not able to have respect in the moment. We want something else. And that's when the substitute, the lies, the vanity come in. That's what it comes in. When we don't sell our soul, we don't wean our soul. Okay, yeah, I'm ready to close now. I, yeah, where am I? Oh, there it is, Leviticus 26 and 10. You know, he gave them, I like Leviticus 26 because it's, it's spiritual. I know it looks natural, but it's some spiritual stuff in there. But verse 10, for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful, multiply you. 26, Leviticus 26, did I say that right? 10? Okay, I just, I didn't know I heard some little back and forth, so I didn't know if I was off. Verse 9. For I respect unto you and make you fruitful, multiply you, establish my covenant with what? You. And you shall eat what? Old store. And bring forth the old because of the new. He said, he, so he said, look, I got something new I want to bring, but you won't respect the old. <laughs> you won't honor the moment. And you want something different. He came for the new, that's right, in old wine skin. But there's a place of transition. He said, I want to do something with you. But you got to have a respect. But we gotta, we've been uh, uh, this is, uh, annoyed by more because we look at grandeur. We look like, uh, we, you know, we've been taught on increase and all that other stuff. But I, I think about, see, when I, when I started thinking, when God started speaking to me personally about doing some new things, I started thinking about old things. <laughs> Y'all like, what? Yeah, that seems like it's in reverse because that's the way God works. He works in reverse. You know, when uh, uh, any, when uh, Mary, Mary got called, when Elizabeth got called, when Zach, Zach, was Zechariah got called, they were doing old things. When David got called, he was doing old things. He was with the sheep. Before he became a shepherd of Israel, he was with the sheep. So we think it's monotonous to have discipline. To have things going the same way. So it don't have that appeal, that zeal, that 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 connection. It just tells us it's just just. To, I don't nothing in my life is as humdrum and boring it may seem to the outsider. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. strategic. Mm -hmm. It's systematic. Yeah. As much as I try to, because there's an objective and a goal I have in mind. Mm -hmm. So I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. So in the season of sowing and pruning, to the natural eye, it says that's painful, that's boring. But I know that in the appointed time of the Father, mm -hmm. it's going to come forth. Yes. It's not going to tarry. It's going to speak and not lie. Yeah. But i got to make sure in my heart of hearts that I'm complicit yeah. in my season, my season right now, so that when the season that's on the horizon comes, I have made room for it. Yes. <laughs> but the dinner of these won't allow us. Because it's always one of the, and another thing. Prophetic words can become a den of these. But let me just come. I didn't say that, but it's in my notes. A prophetic word can become a den of these because we have such an expectation for when this day is over. Mm -hmm. mm. And I told you before, what you do now is important for where you're going. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no future without now. Yes. Mm -hmm. That present moment and, and all the 
the disciplines and the foundational and the principles are being released and the wisdom that's being released. When you get to the, your future, you want to be, when you get there, you don't want to forfeit it. When that day come upon you, you be well qualified because you've done your homework. I spent time with the Holy Ghost. So when you get ready to promote you for whatever venue it is, you be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you know your labor is not vain. Why? Because you've done your homework. You got familiar with the voice of, of the Spirit. You've studied to show yourself approved unto God. You rightly divided the word of truth. Come on now. Those really elementary and basic things that we refute. Want the glamour, the glitz. It's not going to work like that. Father, I just ask tonight that you redirect us and bring us to a place that the den of thieves that want to operate and usurp authority and, and to cause us to take another another route to short to take short cut, cuts and to be short circuited. I want us to become a people that come to full maturity. So that the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length, the influence, the vision, the stability, and the maturity that's necessary will come to this house. Because you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think by your power, your spirit, that's strengthening our inner man. What a promise. That we hold fast comprehend with our mind and with our will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.